We live in a rapidly changing, fast-paced world where actually the skills required for our, by employers are changing. We, where we need digital skills, we live in an interconnected world and therefore we need to address people with the skills they need for tomorrow. Uh, we've seen recent guidance or uh, evidence that has said that uh, 40% of employers uh, believe that they don't have the skill set for the future. 77% uh, of CEOs uh, are concerned that the lack of skills will impact on economic growth. So we need to work together to see what we can do to support the workplace for tomorrow. We need absolutely this triangle of the educational system, industry and businesses and policy makers. Uh, one without the other cannot work. We cannot talk about uh, employment if we don't talk about education. How we cannot uh, uh, underline education if we don't think about the future employment. So all these points of triangle are very crucial and I am really looking forward that uh, industry and businesses and education system as well, they are joining us here in the parliament because as policy maker we have to listen to them and we have to understand what are the real needs of new skills. One of the most important uh, thing, thing is the non-formal and informal warning because the em employers, they are expecting people who to working in challenging workload to to have uh, leadership skills, uh, to be equipped with the right set of skills. I'm actually here to talk partially about a project that I'm working on at the moment within the Sheffield City region called the Skills Bank. Um, so the key difference with the Sheffield City region Skills Bank is it puts employers in control. So rather than employers having to pick the kind of skills and training and the kinds of qualifications that they want from what's already out there, they're able to pick the things that really help their businesses grow. They're able to pick the things that they need. Um, and by building that higher level of competence within their employee base, um, as their businesses grow, they're also able to create entry points into the business, which again helps with lowering unemployment and helps create social mobility. So it's a project that serves the employers, but it also serves the region and the people. Uh, my main message is the fact that automotive is going through the most profound change in the next five years in comparison to the last 50 years. And through that we need to encourage skills to meet that challenge, but no one's responsibility in that challenge is uh, other than industry. And with industry and government support, we hope to get the solutions correctly and make sure that automotive and automotive industry as a whole becomes viable across the EU for years to come. I think the responsibility of the European Parliament and other parliaments is to engage with industry and to make those, those uh, collaborations possible. I think it's important for industry and government to work together and for in government to take away some of the blockers that happens when industry tries to engage with, uh, with providers, with schools, with universities, etc. to make skills a holistic approach across the, the EU. Uh, my main message is that it's important to educate young people about the future of jobs. So what we are very concerned about is that it's not possible to know today what the jobs of tomorrow will be. So it's important to concentrate on the skills that young people need in order to be better prepared for that highly changing environment and fast changing environment of the future. So my main message for today is really that uh, business and education should work more closely together. Um, why is this? Because we think by working closely together we can really help our youth to gain the right skills. Eh? And this is also the reason why as Nestle we have been setting up our youth program and introducing a lot of apprenticeship schemes across Europe. Investment in skills is really the single most important investment for our economies and societies, for the Europe of today and for tomorrow. So the new skills agenda sets out important measures to achieve that, but to really make a difference on the ground, we really need the partnerships from businesses, member states, local governments, civil societies, individuals. I think today we made a very good start to that.